And now I'd like to welcome both Richard and Lisa Bausch. Before we get started, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I would like young Timmy O'Brien to come up and show us what he showed me that he does with this thing. I've never been able to solve this ever once, and I tried for a long time until I finally broke it into small pieces and gave up. All right, three, two, one, go. I quit. <laughs> Can everyone hear me? Because uh, this is a conversation that takes place in bed. And um, so um, I want to make sure that the voices are carrying. Um, first, I want to thank everybody who has anything to do with this. This is, the, every summer, the, the most amazing thing. Um, friendships get made. People, people personify Shakespeare's lovely line about grappling them to you with hoops of steel. And uh, friendships never die, and they go on. There are so many people in my life whom I love deeply, whom I did not know before I started coming to Suwannee. And every summer I look forward to seeing them if I get the call, as we call it. <laughs> did you get the call? <laughs> Um, I just want to thank everybody. It's just, it's such a great, it's a family. It really is like a family reunion every summer. And uh, last night I got to sit up really late and uh, ply Mr. Kent Ippolito with a lot of uh, various forms of imbibation, as we call it. <laughs> and we talked music and instruments and um, we had a blast. It was just so great. I didn't want it to end. And finally there wasn't anybody left, but... Uh, but Kent and me and my son-in-law, Adam, and we just sat there and laughed for a little more and then got up and broke it all up and went on home with that buzz feeling in your ears that, uh, you know, you've had a great time and you think, if I die now, it's fine. Um, I want to start, before I call my lovely wife up here with a, um, I was going to use this in my craft lecture, but since Tim introduced a wonderful craft lecture moment in his reading, <laughs> I thought I'd start with this one. This is what I consider to be the essence of what fiction is. Um, a fellow was playing golf and with his wife, and he sliced the ball off into the woods, and it hit a bush, and the leprechaun jumped out and said, you hit the lucky bush. you get three wishes. And the guy says, uh, I, I'd, I'd like never to shoot over par again. The leprechaun says, it's done. You're going to shoot a 67 today. You're going to get an eagle on the next hole. He goes, my God, and oh, uh, I'd like a new Lamborghini in the garage when I get home. It's done. Check your garage when you get home. And he says, uh, and, and I, 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 I'd like a million dollars. It's done. You check your bank account. And he says, oh, that's wonderful. And the leprechaun says, I notice you're playing along with your wife here. We leprechauns are kind of mischievous. You mind if I take her off in the woods and play a little games with her? She's kind of sexy. And he looks at her and says, honey, w would you do it? It's, real, it's a million bucks. And she goes, you're, su <laughs> you're such an ass, I am going to do it. And she goes in the woods with the leprechaun, and they're coming out. And the leprechaun says, how old is your husband? And she says, 41. He goes, hmm, he's a little old to be believing in leprechauns, isn't he? <laughs> And the great thing about it, and the secret of all fiction writing, is you bought the leprechaun. 
I said a leprechaun jumped out of a bush, and every single one of you went, oh, yeah, okay, leprechaun jumped out of the bush. <laughs> the cry of the occasion is a short story, is a story. It's a story. And so there it was. There it was happening, you know. So now I'm going to ask you to come up here. Lisa, come on up. This is Lisa Cupolo Bausch. Pull it up close, testing, testing. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Can you hear me closer? Okay. Can you hear me now? I got a soft voice, so let me. Got room to move. Okay. All right. <coughs> this is called the voices from the other room. <sighs> hmm. Happy? Mm. That was lovely. Wasn't that lovely? Sweet. So sweet. I've been so miserable. Are you warm? I'm toasty. Love me? What do you think? It was good for you? You were nice. Nice? Just nice? Nice is wonderful, Andy. It's more than good, for instance. You're so insecure about it lately. Why is that? I'm not insecure. I just like to know I gave you pleasure. You did. That's all I wanted to know. I mean, it's a simple thing. Okay. Helen? What? Nothing. No, tell me. Well, if it was wonderful, why didn't you say wonderful? <laughs> Is this a test? Okay, you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I wish we could be together more often. I've been s so miserable. You have no idea. I think I have an idea. I don't mean you haven't suffered, too. Good thing. Yeah, but I can't help it. I feel so guilty about Janice and the boys. I'm afraid they'll see the unhappiness in my face over the dinner table. Oh, I wish I could find a way to tell her and get the whole thing settled. I wish I could see you more than once a week. Andy, don't. I know you're busy. Oh, God. I guess I made it sound like this is a lunch date or something. I'm sorry. I'm such a wreck. Oh, Andy. Why do you have to pick at everything like that? I said I was sorry. Well, let's just be quiet a while, okay? Please. You comfy? I think I just said I was. Okay. Look, really, why don't we just drift a little? I'm sleepy. I don't feel like talking. <laughs> Seems you never feel like talking anymore. What would be the point? That's kind of harsh, don't you think? We just keep going over the same ground, don't we? We always come back to the same things. You talk about how miserable you are, and then you worry about Janice and the boys, and I talk about how my life, which I can hardly bear, is so busy. Are you trying to tell me something? God, I don't think so. Well, really, Helen? I'm not blaming anybody. I want to sleep a little, okay? Okay. But I know I won't sleep. <laughs> you sound determined. I just know myself. <clears throat> Helen? What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's silly. I expect nothing else. You, you Tell me. You wanted to sleep. Just say it, Andy. It's, well, it's just that okay is okay, and... Wonderful is wonderful, and n nice is nice. They, they all mean different things. I told you it was silly. What sort of reassurance are you looking for here? I thought it was nice. I thought it was wonderful. 
I'm here exactly as I have been every Friday for the last two months. Nothing has changed. All right? You're such a worrier. I'm sorry. But, but was it nice or wonderful? <laughs> Lord, pick one. You were that. You're pretty glib about it, don't you think? Really? Okay, never mind. Look, what is this? I was just asking. Nice is not wonderful. Is this a grammar lesson? I'm just saying a true thing, that's all. God, you were wonderful. Great, terrific, magnificent, and glorious. <laughs> the fucking earth moved, okay? <laughs> Don't tell me I hurt your feelings now. Come on. Is his itty bitty feelings hurt? Don't do that. <laughs> this? It, don't. It, cut it out, Helen. I'm tickling you. It's supposed to tickle. Well, don't. I'm not in the mood. All right. And don't be cross. I'm not cross. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whole thing's silly. Whatever you say, Mr. Man. <laughs> There's no need to take an attitude. Helen? Darling, I think it's a little bit too late to be worrying about whether or not we've been okay in bed, isn't it? Oh, so now I was just okay. <laughs> My God. It's never too late to worry about a thing like that. Oh, for Christ's sake. I didn't mean it that way. Well, what way did you mean it? Mean it? Boy, this is some afterglow we've got going on. I can't help it. Helen? What? Do you ever think of him when we're... Stop it, Andy. I told you I can't help it. You're being ridiculous. I can't believe you'd bring him up that... Oh, sorry. I can't believe you'd bring him up that way. <laughs> I lose the bet. I'm the one that went up. Okay. You do think about him then. This isn't a film, Andy. No, I know. Why do you say this isn't a film? What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Forget it. You think I'm being overly dramatic. That's natural enough, isn't it, under the circumstances? You know, I really don't want to talk about it. Well, I'll tell you something. I can't get him out of my head. You? <laughs> you think about him? Of course I do. <laughs> While we're... When we're... All the time, sure. God. That's, uh, that makes me queasy. You mean you don't think of him? He never enters your mind? He never enters my mind. I have trouble remembering him when he's speaking to me. And you don't compare? Compare what? Nothing. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake, Sandy. Don't be cross. Look, I don't think about him, okay? He, uh, he used to tell me things in those first years you were married. What things? Forget it. What things? <laughs> Jesus Christ, what are you talking about? What things? What things did he tell you? Never mind about it, okay? It's, it's nothing. If it's nothing, why can't you tell me? Don't get up. I want a glass of water. I'll get it for you. There. Thank you. Now tell me what fucking things he talked to you about, Andy. Well, well he is my brother after all. <laughs> Men talk about their sexual, about sex, you know. You mean he would tell you about what we did? Oh boy, give me an example. Look, I'm sorry I brought it up. No, come on, I wanna know. You tell me. Tell me. Don't cry. I'm not crying, God damn you, tell me. He, well, he, 
he said you did oral things and that you were excitable. Excitable. That you, you'd cry out. Oh, Jesus, God. Oh, boy, this is funny. This is classic. <laughs> Andy? I know. You're really an asshole, you know that? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. It was boys talking. Well, but now, let me see if I can get this straight. Now I'm not living up to your fantasies based on what Joe told you about me in bed? Is that it? No, Christ, you make it sound. But you, you are, you're thinking of what Joe told you, right? I, I, I don't, I don't. Oh, if that isn't men for you. Now don't start on all that crap. There's nothing to extrapolate from the fact that my brother told me a few things a long time ago. Yeah, well, maybe Joe was lying. Did that ever occur to you? Maybe I wouldn't be here with you now if Joe was half as good as he must have said he was? You mean that's the only reason we, you and I... Boy, is this ever a fun conversation. Tell me what I'm apparently lacking according to the legends you've heard. Stop it, Helen. I just wanted to be sure I was giving you as much pleasure as... Hell, never mind. No, no, this is interesting. You want to know if I think you're as good, right? I wanted to be sure I was giving you pleasure. Is that such a terrible thing? And there was no thought of gratifying your male ego? No, please don't hand me that feminist shit. Not now. Well, isn't that it? No, that is not it. You couldn't tell from what we just did that I was getting pleasure out of it? Okay. This whole thing bothers you more than it bothers me, right? Well, he's my brother, after all. He never deigned to remind himself of that fact. Why should you? Because he is my brother. When was the last time he played that role with you? This isn't about roles or role-playing, okay? This is blood. No, don't, Helen. Stay, please. When was the last time he had anything to do with you, besides ordering you around and berating you for the fact that you don't make $875,000 a year setting up contracts for corporate giants? Remember, remember when I got interested in astronomy and he bought me that big, expensive telescope? And we started looking at the planets and the stars and making calculations and charting the heavenly bodies in flight. You remember that? Yes. Well, I was looking through that thing one night, and it came to me that the distances between those heavenly bodies, that was like the distance I felt between him and me. And it didn't have anything to do with sex. The sex was fine then. Back then... At least I thought it was fine. Fine, not nice or wonderful? <laughs> Jesus, you're beginning to sound pathetic. It was a joke, Helen. Can't you take a joke? I wasn't joking. I was trying to tell you something. If this was a film, I think I'd be trying to get you to kill him or something. Make it look like an accident. Good Lord. Why not? Happens all the time. We could play Hamlet, the classic love triangle. Stop this. Hey, Andy, it's just talk, right? I'm babbling on because I'm so happy. Why'd you marry him anyway? I loved him. You thought you loved him? No. God damn you, I loved him. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? I don't know what kind of person you think I am. It's just that all of this is so strange for me, and I can't keep from thinking about him. You mean you can't stop thinking about what he told you about me in bed? Oh, I wish I hadn't mentioned that. I'm not talking about that now. That isn't all we talked about. And you told him about your adventures with Janice? Stop it, Helen. Well, tell me. Give me an example of whatever else you talked about. I don't know. When I was living in Dublin, and he came through on one of his trips, you and he were married a year before, I think. He was so glad. 
He told me stuff you guys were doing together, places you went, New York and Grand Canyon. He even had pictures. You, you looked so happy in those pictures. I was happy. We've been married 10 years. What do you think? It was all torture? Jesus, Andy. Well, I feel bad for him. He's happy. He's got his work, his travels, his pals. His life is organized the way he likes it. You know what he said to me on our last anniversary? He said he wasn't sure he was as heterosexual as other men. Imagine that. What the hell was he talking about? He doesn't feel drawn to me that way. He, he hasn't touched me in months, okay? Do you need me to be as graphic about all this as he was back when we were 25 years old? And I believe that what happened between us was private. No, don't. Come on. I'm sorry. Don't cry. I'm not crying. Anyway, this doesn't really have anything to do with him. No, I wish we could stop talking about him. You're the one who brought him up, buddy. <laughs> Don't be cross. Come on. Please. Well, Christ's sakes. For Christ's sakes. Can't you just enjoy something for what it is without tearing it all to pieces? You know what you are, Andy? You're morbid. I'm scared. I am. I'm scared. Scared of what? Joe? He's in another time zone. Remember? He won't be home for another week. I think I'm scared of you. It, it's like I'm on the outside of you some way. I'm, like there's walls I can't see through. I, I don't know what effect I have on you or if I really mean anything to you. Do you want me to simper and tell you how I can't live without you? Well? I don't know what I want. It's like you're a drug, and I can't get enough of you. But I get the feeling sometimes. I can't express it exactly, but, well, you could do without me very easily. I do. I get that feeling. Poor Andy. I can't help it. And now you expect me to reassure you about that, too? There's nothing wrong with saying you love someone. And that's what you want? N never mind. No, really. We started with you worrying about whether or not you were as sexy as Joe, or whether or not I found you as sexy as Joe. Let's just forget it, okay? Are you afraid of what my answer might be? I thought you had answered it. Look. Why did you want to get involved in the first place? I think it just happened, didn't it? Well, Andy, didn't it? That's the way it felt. Then why question it now? You, you said you looked through the telescope and saw the distances between... Oh, are we going to talk about this all night? Well, why haven't you divorced him? I might. Someday, I might. But, but why not now? Do you want me to? Where would I go? You could come to me. I'm here now. But we could get married. Oh, please. Can we change the subject? Can we talk about all this later? Surely you can see this is not the time. You don't believe me? I mean, it would be terrible to leave Janice and the boys, but I think I would. If you were really free and I could have you, I really think I would. You do. You think you would. <laughs> well, would you or wouldn't you? I said I think I would. <laughs> oh, Andy, you're hilarious. You know it? I believe I would once you were free. Ah, an article of faith. There's no reason to be sarcastic. I know, Andy. Let's talk about the stars crossing through the blackness of space. Let's talk about the moons of Jupiter and Mars. You're being sarcastic. I'm simply trying to change the subject. OK, we'll change the subject. <sighs> That's what you want. Just change it. It's what I want.
Well. I'm thinking, Jesus, <laughs> you don't give a man a chance. Terrific. Just wait a minute, can't you? Helen? No, I'm listening. Did you ever think you'd end up here? I don't think I'm going to end up here particularly. You make it sound awful. You know how I mean it. All right, darling. Let's just say that from where I started, I would never have predicted it. You're right about that. I feel the same way. Now, if you don't mind, can we sleep a little, sir? I'm sorry. And stop apologizing. I swear you're the most apologetic man I know. Do you know how many times a day you're sorry about something? You're right, sweetie. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus, listen to me. I've been so miserable, my love. Oh, Christ. Okay, I won't talk about it anymore. Is that a promise? I promise, <clears throat> sweetie, really. Thanks, kind sir. I think I should go soon. Yeah, I guess so. Sweetie? Andy? Do you love me? I just need to hear it once. Honey? Aren't you going to? Helen? Sweetie, please. Helen? <laughs>